Hello everyone and welcome back to Channel Dad Brian Lape Reads. And uh, this is from CheatSheet.com. This is a one that I've been meaning to do for quite some time. As you can see by the date, July 23rd. This is obviously, uh, you know, I, th I've read parts of this article and um, this person is a lunatic. But hey, we're going to read it anyway. Robert Yanis Jr. mentioned Star Wars Last Jedi to fans and they're bound to stir up a, a debate. Uh, maybe. I think a lot of us are just over it. We're just going to say, yeah, the movie sucked and move on. And we're not going to talk to you about it. Writer-director Ryan Johnson's 2017 Star Wars movie was arguably shaken up the franchise more than uh, than even the prequels. Yeah, not arguably it has. It split the fan base into about 7,000 different factions. Yet for all the discussion about how the movie affected the saga, many fans forgot to acknowledge one of the most essential figures. Um, okay, and I, and I, you know, I know where they're going. And uh, here's the thing, Robert. Uh, we did a whole show about Paige. I started a whole movement on uh, YouTube about Justice for Paige before the movie came out when we knew Paige was going to die or before I saw it. I don't remember. Uh, fans of her die or Rose Tico. Yeah, Rose Tico was yet, yet another Disney um, character in, in the Disney star Wars universe. That was a race racial like, racially based character. Just like Finn. Finn was, it was multiple black stereotypes. And now um, they did the same thing here to Kelly. Uh, much of the online discourse surrounding, I uh, was centered around Rose Tico. Uh, Rose uh, served the resistance as a maintenance worker before getting swept up in an adventure with John Boyega's Finn. This plot line, which she, she was assaulting people, uh, for keeping them from escaping with, there was nothing that, that said that she was told to do that, but which sees a duo meet. Okay. Beyond, uh, Benico, Benicio uh, del Toro's DJ and travel. Okay, so anyway, it's often cited as the least interesting in the film. However, fans, some, some fans took their negative emotions out on train. The actor was su subsequently harassed online. Uh, n <laughs> only left all social media. Um, she was harassed online by the media, not fans. This myth keeps going. Kelly Tran has addressed it multiple times herself, directly saying it was the media hounded her over because of the, being Asian. She just wants to be an actress. She doesn't want to be an Asian actress. She just wants to be considered an actress, period, in the discussion. She wants her work to speak for itself, not her, you know, uh, cultural background. And yet the media, you know, we're talking about, you know, various Asians, the first Asian, this, first, and, and she's past that. And yet this myth persists. Yet some fans of Last Jedi have defended Tran and hope to see more of her character. Uh, you're not gonna. They don't know what to do to, with Rose Tico. And this is why her role in The Rise of Skywalker was diminished because she's now become a, a, a it's a battleground, uh, uh, you know, a penis measuring contest to see who's got the smallest one between Ryan Johnson and J.J. Abrams. Um, much of, uh, of Rose much as for as much as Rose has dominated the last Jedi conversation, her sister has been nearly absent from it. Um, not by the true fans, not by a star Wars fans. Um, you know, both of these young ladies, uh, are not bad looking and yet they're both made up to be, you know, just potato sacks really. But Rose's sister Paige kicked off the entire movie. Correct. In the movie's opening sequence, uh, Poe Dameron, Oscar Isaac leads an assault on one of the first bomb, uh, orders, on the first order is Dreadnought. His rash uh, actions wind up getting the resistance bombing uh, fleet killed. No, it doesn't. Uh, see, the thing is, he goes through and destroys a bunch of their guns so that the bombers can make it. Now, the bombers are, are harassed by fighters. Um, but that that's what you want. It's That's the, the image Ryan is trying to portray, but it, that's not what happens. Um, but at the last moment, one man, pilot manages to release explosives to take down the, uh, that. Not a pilot. She's a bombardier. Uh, she's a gunner, actually. Uh, she's like the, the tail gunner. And she has to climb up and release the bombs herself. Played by Van Veronica Nyong, uh, the character's heroic actions not only set up Poe's arc, but also Poe's arc. <laughs> also that of The Last Jedi itself. Johnson's movie questions the nature of leadership, what it means to be a hero. Uh, look, watch any war movie. Not anymore. Many war movies, even ones made back in the 40s. And you will find a character. This was one of the things that drove me nuts about Wonder Woman. You had this guy that was basically suffering from PTSD who still suffers from PTSD. He never overcomes it and becomes a hero again. Never. Okay. 
that whole it, this is a hero a hero stereotype at this point you know trope that there's there's one guy that or one person that you know maybe they're a, a conscious objector maybe they don't agree with certain things they don't think they should be somewhere or, you know they're always whining about something and then finally they have a moment where they they have to rise up or die now sometimes they do die um Sometimes they rise up and they give them themselves to the cause, which is essentially what Paige does here, since the explosion kills the ship too. Um, and that so doesn't question what leadership is at all. What it doesn't question any that is what it, that is what it means to be a hero, where you put your the cause, the just cause above your own personal gains, and that's what she does. Paige's sacrifice in the film uh, opening open, film's opening few minutes creates a foundation for that moral exploration which is a trope uh and yet nong had no clue how in, in, integral her character would be to the movie until she saw it at the premiere and yeah and they make zero mention about it i mean kelly's cry you know you know um not Kel well uh rose is crying over it but i don't even know if they mention her name okay i remember being nervous and scared going into the project because they are so strict uh, Nung told Insider, it's understandable because it's so big, but I couldn't see anything. I read, okay, take pictures on when I shot it. I had no idea how big the ship was. So yeah, because you're, you're on a green screen for the most time. Um, also appears on Netflix, The Old Guard. Uh, Paige, uh, T Paige Tico's role in Star Wars Universe might have been brief, but that's what it's worth. Okay, so, th and this is the end of the article, more or less. Since joining the Star Wars family, Nung starred in Will Smith's vehicle, Bright, and Spike Lee's uh, The Five Bloods. In 2019, she also headlined Fury, uh, the highest grossing movie in her native Vietnam. And most recently, uh, Star Wars, uh, she stars opposite Charlize Theron in The Old Guard, which I, I've not seen any of those movies. And I think, well, Bright, I think I saw. Um, I think it's the one with aliens and wizards and all kinds of stuff. But, you know, uh, on the fan cast, we talked about Paige quite a bit. And, uh, and Paige and, and um, Rose and how they were mistreated by Ryan Johnson, uh, mistreated by the media, uh, the fans, you know, I think the fans are disappointed in the side quest that they go on that really leads to nothing. And then you have um, Finn about to make the heroic sacrifice and then Rose knocks it out and, and sexually assaults him, basically. She assaults him throughout the whole movie, basically. Um, so really, okay, Robert, uh, you don't really have a point and you make several horrible points and then you pretend that this whole, just go watch a war movie, man. Go, you know, go watch, if you really want to see some, you know, go watch uh, Sergeant York. Here was a conscientious objector, okay, uh, doesn't want to go to to Europe in World War One, and yet uh, captures a lot of Germans by being able to shoot very accurately, very rapidly, and uh, gets them to surrender. Saves his comrades. Um, and then, uh, uh, oh, what's the name? Shoot, I'm going to forget the guy's name. But uh, there was a Mel Gibson movie. It's a Heartbreak Ridge. Uh, that was a con he was a conscious objector. Went and refused to uh, train uh, with a weapon. Went into combat as a medic, unarmed as a marine, and um, he ended up winning the Medal of Honor. Okay, so uh, this 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 is the type of thing that happens. This is the hero's journey in many ways. The self sacrificing to win the the battle for their cause. And, uh, I do agree that, um, we kind of gloss over page. We forget her for pretty quickly. I don't even, like I said, I don't even know if they mentioned her name, uh, but get your facts straight. The media hounded Kelly Tran. She said it multiple times. It was the media is why she left, uh, because they could, they kept making stuff about her, her background and who she is uh, being an Asian actress, an Asian American, as opposed to just an, an American actress. That's all she wants to be is an American actress. And you people, you media people like you, Robert won't let her be one. Let her let her work and her talents speak for her. For that should be the biggest beacon of of what it is. How good is she? Period. The fact that she's got as an Asian Asian descent is immaterial. Okay, and let's let's try to get past that and look at people's talents and who they really are, and not this artificial nonsense. So, uh, Robert, you can stuff it, and I'm out of here. Goodbye. Maybe this last part. Come on, beach ball program, go away.
I didn't mean to open you. Maybe I should have just left it. <laughs> it's only audio. Well, no, it's some video. Well, you know, the screen. Oh, my God. I'm just going to go. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. All right, three, two, one.